Hey, my name is Dr. Brendan McCarthy. I am the Chief Medical Officer of Protea Medical Center in Chandler, Arizona. Welcome to my podcast. I'm so happy you're here. Before I start anything, would you guys do me a favor? Just reach down there and, and press the subscribe button and uh, let's get started. Today, I want to talk about the pathways that we deliver hormones to patients. This is important to me and it's important to circle back into it. I've talked about it before, but I want to get into it in depth because there's a lot of questions, a lot of concerns. And, and let me not, let me beat around the bush. We're talking oral estrogen. Okay, let's talk about oral estrogen. We need to separate this out and understand a little bit better together because there seems to be misunderstanding. Sometimes I look at the comments, people think that I'm against estrogen. I'm not at all against anything other than bad medicine. Hormones are an essential part of your biology as a human being. It's a part of your identity. Unless there's a direct contraindication for estrogen in your body, I know that. I know it's important. We, we, I know this. The catch comes with me is in the practice of medicine. When we give you a hormone from the outside in, you need it. And we should do our lab work to know you need it. And we should know what our goal is with using it. We should have a plan on monitoring it and how to care for you. This is basic medicine. This is basic logical medicine. You want to monitor the person, take care of them. That's basic stuff. The thing is, is that when you give something from the outside in, it's not the same way the body processes it. So there's something called pharmacokinetics, which is how the hormone moves through your body. Now, when you release it from your ovaries or, or man's testicles, where we're getting this from, it's going to be released at a certain rate, at a certain path. When I give it to you from the outside in, and I'm never going to be ever, ever anything like how your body would do it itself. So by giving you this hormone from the outside in, I'm going to see a change in the pharmacokinetics of it through your body. When we give a woman estradiol orally, it has to go and get absorbed through the liver because that's digestion and it gets absorbed into the liver. The liver has first crack at it. Now, when the liver looks at it through that pathway of ingestion through food, like food, your liver reacts to it a little differently than if it were to see it in your bloodstream circulating. That's a weird circulation thing I just did. <laughs> That's not circulation. <laughs> okay, sorry. You get my feel. You get, where I'm, you get where I'm going on this. When your ovaries are releasing it, it's going to just be in circulation. Released by the ovaries, it's going to go right into circulation. It's going to go throughout the body. We do it orally. has to pass through digestion, and your liver does not understand it as a food because estrogen is not a food, okay? So when you take it in orally, there's going to be a couple things that I know happen. You know how I know that? We learn in the med school, basic stuff. It's not advanced. This is basic stuff. When a woman absorb oral estradiol, it will be bioconverted to its downstream metabolite, estrone. Estrone is an inflammatory estrogen. No one will argue that with me. No one will argue that with me because it's basic science. And if they do, that means there's been a breakthrough in science. It's going to turn the world on its head, but that's not going to happen. Oral estradiol runs to estrone. One of the ways you can prove for that, you run your lab work. If you run lab work on women who you give oral estrogen to, you know that you're going to see estrone preferentially gets higher. Oral estradiol, making more estrone, creates a different risk in that woman than if she were to get it through an injection or topical, transvaginal, or pellet. Oral estradiol creates more side effects because it generates that estrone at a higher level. It creates more risks because it generates estrone at a higher level. It just does that. Whether we want it to or not, it does that. Not every woman is going to have that metabolism where it's going to really crank it up super high. Not every woman. Some women can go through their whole lives, no problem. They're good. Fine. But what about that one that doesn't? And she has high estrone because she took the oral estrogen. Oral estradiol making estrone, estrone being elevated, when estrone is elevated, it stimulates thrombin. That is why oral estrogens have the risk for clots. Oral estradiol that makes estrone, when estrone levels become elevated, it is an inflammatory estrogen. Estrone does not cause breast cancer. It does not cause breast cancer. But there are enough studies that show that estrone as an inflammatory estrogen promotes that pathway. I'll put the citations in the description if you're looking at this for the full video. 
And if we're going to be talking about this on Instagram, I'll be putting it into the, I'll pin it to the top comment to explain that to you guys. But estrone does play a role in breast cancer pathology. It is an important part. Did it cause it? No. Even if it increases risks a little bit, don't you deserve to know that? Many, many women will defend estradiol as a medication and, and get upset that I'm having a problem with or pouring cold water on oral estrogen because they think that somehow or another I'm trying to take estrogen away. Hold on for a second and hear me. If a man presents to my clinic with low testosterone, do I give him oral testosterone? No. First of all, no. I, you can. It's available. You can do it. It's fine. But if you give him oral testosterone, what happens? Liver pathology. Bump up in sex hormone binding globulin. Increase in dihydrotestosterone. Negative impact. Why is it that I would give better care to a man than I would to a woman? Why is it that I would say, no, you can't get oral testosterone to the guy. You have to get injection because that's what we're going to do for you. And to the woman, hey, you take the oral. doesn't matter. Oral testosterone in men has a risk factor for liver pathology, for downstream metabolites. Oral estrogen has a downstream metabolite issue. You see how this is? We can accept this one, but not this. If you're going to get estrogen, you deserve it to be done with care. You deserve the best part of us in that room with you. You deserve us to be our best selves in those moments. My best self is the person who knows that these downstream metabolites are real. My best self knows that those women who have those downstream metabolites elevated have risks that they deserve to be educated on so that they can make an educated decision. The word doctor comes from the word docere in Latin, which means to teach. My job as your doctor is to give you an understanding of what's happening, an unbiased understanding of everything that's happening. These are all the metabolites in play. This is who you are. This is who you are. This is what I see. These are the risks of this, the risks of that. Benefits we do this, benefits we do that. Once you have that information, you make the decision. And then my job is to make sure that the decision you make, I follow through it with you. I make sure it's in a healthy way. Whatever it is that we do, we do it and it's a healthy way. I'm taking care of you throughout the whole thing. That's my job. It's my purpose. I know many of you hearing me say anything negative about estrogen, it triggers you. And I know that's because the Women's Health Initiative caused so much trauma for decades to you guys. I know that medicine is largely a misogynistic enterprise. I know, I, I know. I see it, I see it every day in my practice. I see it when the women come to my practice. I, I understand you guys. I, not because I'm a woman, I'll, I'll never know exactly what it's like to be you. I know that. That doesn't mean I'm not empathic. That doesn't mean I never, that I listen, I listen to you. I, I take in what you say, I hear you. And so I can say clearly that medicine is largely misogynistic. And my example in this video today is, look at what we do for men. <laughs> we give them labs, we give them the injectable, we, we take much better care of them, don't we? Women, well, we're on labs, we do oral, I don't care. Symptoms are better, then you're fine. So I know there's trauma. I know. I'm trying to do my part and not make more trauma. It's not that estrogen is bad. It's just that it's a hormone and you are precious. And you deserve your doctor to treat you that way. I hope this helps. I hope this gives you clarity as to why I have a problem or an opposition to oral estrogen. I hope it empowers you to ask the hard questions of your physicians about lab work. I hope, I hope this helps you feel safer in your choices. 
If you know someone that this would benefit, please share it with them. If you thought it was pretty good, like it. If you like what I do here, subscribe. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. I, I really, this is doing this kind of work is, is, is um, I could never have imagined my life being any better than this in these moments, being of service and being of help. So thank you. I'll see you at the next episode.